Hello, people, love you, internet viewers. This fortnight, I will be demonstrating a few ways to acquire cupric chloride at home. Cupric chloride, a very green color, is usually used in circuit board etching, but I will be making it because it's a pretty green crystal and I like shiny things. So I will be going over three methods, or rather just one method, except I'm going to expand upon it, teach you how to optimize the method as much as you can. So for the first method, I will be dissolving some copper scrap and hydrochloric acid. This is pretty basic stuff. I got this acid at Canadian Tire. I wonder what was going on through the clerk's head. It was a girl who goes to my school wondering why I was buying liquid death, muriatic acid. So the first method of trying to dissolve copper inside of this would be to just keep the copper scrap inside of the hydrochloric acid for quite a while. Copper is less reactive than hydrogen, which is why we need to wait for it to oxidize. This process is very slow. I have no intention of waiting several days to show you that the water became slightly more green. I don't know if it's possible to notice right now, but the copper right now inside is a lot more shiny. That's because all of the dark copper oxide has already been dissolved inside of it. So as the limiting factor would be the oxidation of the copper, I propose a solution. Adding an oxidizer would work for this. For example, like hydrogen peroxide, that will oxidize the copper and the hydrochloric acid will begin dissolving the copper right now. As you can see, the copper right now became slightly darker because all of the hydrogen peroxide began oxidizing the copper. Uh, the hydrochloric acid will begin dissolving that, and this will, solution will become much more green. So right now as it is, uh, I will now try and cover this with a film. And I will leave this like this for half an hour, just so you can see what actually happens to it. Now the third method I am most excited about demonstrating, this would be another, you guessed it, electrochemical-ish process. So the way this process is done is by putting two copper electrodes inside of the acid and then passing a current through them. Uh, because both of the electrodes are copper, it shouldn't matter which way the current has passed through because, well, it's still going to be the same result either so way. What's the point of this, you may ask? It would be to strip away the hydrogen from the hydrochloric acid to make chlorine gas and hydrogen gas. Chlorine gas is much more reactive than hydrochloric acid in this case. It will react much better with the copper oxide, which is being formed inside of the tank as we speak. So the reason now why the cathode is black is because it became coated in copper oxide. If I were to shut this thing off for a while, uh, the copper oxide would begin dissolving in chloride. Which will then in turn make copper chloride. So right now, uh, in the footage which is being shown, I turned it off. You can see that the cathode is slowly going back to a coppery color. So I left this sitting like this for like half an hour, and you can see that it's taken on a much more green scent. The copper looks nearly like pure copper, not copper oxide, it's much less dark. Uh, it's clearly cuprous chloride because it's green. There's another type of copper chloride salt, which is blue, and it is green. So the, yeah, this is co cuprous chloride. Anyway, it's in a slightly different style of video for this two-week period. Uh, tell me if you liked it. Uh, that's it for this time. See ya.